everybody, it's Nell with Little Yellow House Crafts and I have a visitor with me today. A lot of people have been asking to see Jamie because the last time you guys saw him, he was four months old. This is Jamie. Jamie, how old are you? Two. Two? Can you do two fingers? Two. Two, that's hard. Hold on, let's get it. How old are you? Two. Two. He just turned two a couple weeks ago and he's a big boy, um, just like my other sons. They've all been like 99th percentile for height and weight up until they hit about four years old. So he's kind of par for the course for us, but you want to say hi? Hi. You say hello? Huh? <laughs> are you so funny? Hmm? Yeah. Hi. That's outside. Yes, what do you see outside? There. What is that? Ball. A ball. Huh? What else do you see? Fo. What? Fo. Fo? What's fo? Do you see birds? Huh? Uh-huh. Do you fo. see? Pie. The what? Pie. The sky? Huh? Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. I'm going to take him back out to hang out with Daddy and Brothers while I film a video, but I just wanted to... Let you all see Jamie. He's grown up so much since the last time you saw him. So can you say bye-bye? Bye-bye. Bye-bye. We'll see you. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> he isn't he sweet? He is just the light of my life. However, he's also definitely two and we have battles of wills on a daily basis. So he keeps us on our toes, but we sure do love him. And we love our other boys as well. In fact, I brought... Oh, there it goes. I brought this, this is my notebook and it has my notes for my video today. And I brought a picture um, that we took, oh, about a year and a half ago now. Jamie was only about six months old, but this is my uh, me with my boys. Uh, my oldest, this is Charlie, and he just turned six. And then this is Henry, he's our, our middle son, and he just turned five. And then this is, of course, Jamie, who is two. So those are my three boys and I love them and they're a handful, but only in the very best of ways. So anyway, hi everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Sorry, I'm getting my notes back open here. Um, I hope you're all doing well. We're doing okay. Uh, we're just keeping on with the um, strange new world we live in. Um, but yeah, nothing much to report. My husband and I did go so far as to plan our 10 year anniversary trip, which felt really reckless to be planning any sort of celebration at all, any traveling, but we're not going until November. Our 10 year anniversary is actually next June. Um, we're still a year away from our anniversary. So this June in about two months will be our nine year anniversary, but we are planning our 10 year anniversary a little bit early because of his schedule with fellowship applications and fellowship um, interviews that he's gonna have to be traveling for. It just, it was easier for everyone all around um, for us to do it this November. So we uh, did plan our anniversary trip. We are going to Disney World. We went to Disney World on our honeymoon and we haven't been back to Disney World since then. We have been to Disneyland, but we haven't been to Disney World since then. Um, I grew up in a major big time Disney family. Uh, he did not, but uh, when we went to Disney World on our honeymoon, he was like a little kid. It was the most fantastic experience of his life. He just loved it. Um, and so we're going back for a 10 year anniversary and we're gonna spend a whole week. Uh, my, my parents are gonna come out here uh, to Missouri to stay with our boys and so it'll just be him and I uh, excuse me him and me and we are going to Disney World for a week in November um, who knows if the parks will even be open we have no idea what's gonna happen if it ends up getting postponed it ends up getting postponed but we just wanted something to look forward to so we did go ahead and plan our trip which is really exciting um, but anyway, other than that, life is pretty normal. Um, I did do something to my neck on Thursday night. It's Saturday morning, by the way. Um, and I wanna apologize if I'm a little stiff. I tweaked my neck Thursday night when I was looking under the couch. We were cleaning up the living room and I was trying to get some toys, I think they were Legos, that were under one of our couches. And I was bending over and reaching, ooh, bending over and reaching and trying to get it and something went in my neck. Yesterday was awful. I was 
like heat packs and alternating Tylenol and ibuprofen all day long. Um, it's a little better today. It's not quite as stiff, but if I'm a little <laughs> rigid, that's why. I didn't do a whole lot of stitching yesterday, not surprisingly. I just think, I was telling my husband this, I think we're just getting old. And I know some of you are laughing because I'm, I'm 33. I'm turning 34 in July, so I know I'm not actually old, but I just, okay, you know, as you get older, you just find your body is not as resilient. There are things that just hurt inexplicably. <laughs> anyway, I just think we're getting older and I'm not as spry as I once was. So anyway, my neck's a little sore. I hope you're all doing well. I've had another very productive two weeks of stitching and we're gonna talk about Stitch Mania plans today. So that's what this is. This laundry basket is full of Stitch Mania plans. So this might be a long video, but we're just gonna go for it. Um, I had seven finishes um, in the last two weeks and plus one new start that's a current whip. I didn't finish it yet. Um, so really productive. So let's just get into it because I don't want this video to be 18 years long. Um, ooh, it hard for me to turn. I'll be careful, I promise. The first one that I finished is that I went ahead and started the second of my Scary Apothecary um, by Hands On Design. This one is Cackle Lozenges. This is the second one I've done now. And I chose to stitch this one on um, the lilac, lavender colored, I think it's lilac. I can't remember what it's called, but it's another um, 32 counts Vigart Linen in the light purple, and here it is. Cackle lozenges, so cute. So that is number two of the Scary Apothecary series done. Um, two down, seven to go. <laughs> next, uh, my next finish, this one was a little bit of a disappointing finish, and I'll tell you what. I wanted, I told you in my last video that I wanted to start uh, my Easter House Trio by Waxing Moon Design since um, last Sunday was Easter. And by the way, Happy Easter everyone, or for any of our friends who are um, Orthodox, Greek Orthodox, or I believe in like um, Russian speaking countries, they celebrate Easter tomorrow. So if you celebrate Easter tomorrow, Happy Easter to you. Um, but I went ahead and started it, and I started it with the DMC that is called for. And I finished one of the houses, which I'm gonna show you. And it is finished, but I don't love the colors. I don't, I thought I liked them when they were just on this, on the, you know, the um, floss tags. And I didn't love them um, finished. So let me just show you. It's not bad, it's not ugly by any stretch of the imagination. It's just not my favorite. Here it is. There's a couple of things that I don't love about it. First, um, I just, I'm not sure I love it on this cream linen. It's a little bit boring, but I think I would like the cream linen if the colors were better. There's just a few colors that are too dark. First of all, this dark purple feels too dark to me, and it's probably just because I use the DMC rather than the actual recommended over dyed floss. I also think that this yellow is a little dark and garish. In the picture, it's much lighter and more lemony. And in th this, it's just a little too dark. Same with the orange. The orange just is a little dark. Anyway, I don't love it. So I stopped and I am not going to finish the Easter House Trio right now. I'm gonna put it away. I'm not gonna throw this out. I might give it as a gift or something, I don't know. But this is not, I'm gonna be stitching this again when I find colors I like better to do the full trio. Um, Cause I have a really cute idea of how I wanna finish these um, Waxing Moon Design house trios. Um, and I, I look forward to being, being able to switch them out seasonally, but I just don't like the colors enough um, of this to go ahead and do the other two. So. You win some, you lose some. It's really the only thing I don't like that I've finished in the last two weeks, so it could be much worse. But anyway, that is a finish, so that was finish number two. Not my favorite, but hey. Um, next, I have two finishes here. This is finish three and four, and that is my Lizzie Kate Tingles. I finished Ghosties and Ghoulies, and I finished Haunted. 
Um, and I talked about this in my last video, working on the picture this plus ale 32 count, how it's kind of tight. It still is. I did get a couple suggestions from a few viewers in my last video. Thank you. I think I wrote their names down. Debbie was one and Julie was another and they both recommended using a larger needle because um, I typically use a size 26 needle when I'm stitching on 32 count um, but they recommended going down to a 24 or maybe even a 22 um, because what it does they said is kind of opens the hole up and pushes the threads out of the way a little bit in order to let the, the threads on your needle lie flat as they go through. So next time I pull this out to stitch on, I think I'm going to try that. I think I'll start with a 20, a size 24 needle and see how that goes. And if it's still having problems, I might try a size 22, but both of them highly recommended going with a larger needle. So if you struggle with really tight fabric, um, with the same kind of bulky bulk problem when you're stitching, maybe give that a shot. Um, one of them, I think Debbie also mentioned the ballpoint needles. I've never tried those. Um, I think it would drive me crazy because I use my needle almost as a laying tool sometimes. I will use it to kind of separate strands and, and not just to stitch with. I actually use my needle to like manipulate the thread. So I think a ballpoint needle wouldn't work for me. But another good idea, if you have a ballpoint needle, that's another way to maybe try to get your threads to lay more flat. So anyway, thank you to those who suggested that. I'll try that next time, but let's... Stop talking now, just show the darn stitching. Here it is, it's still on my roller frame. Um, it's so pretty, I love this. It's just the colors are so Halloween-y in the very best way. Um, I am loving it, other than the bulkiness, which still bothers me a little bit, not enough to be a problem. Honestly, I was just fine finishing these. Um, but I have two done. There are 12 in the series, so I am one sixth of the way done, two down, 10 to go on, on Lizzie Kate's Tingles. So that is finish number three and finish number four. I'm counting that as two finishes because they're two separate charts. They're small, but they're two separate charts. Then finish number five. I showed this in my last video as well that I was gonna start. This is my April word play by Brenda Gervais. Sorry for the glare, there we go. April wordplay. I did brighten this up a lot. So I know some of you who are going to see this are not going to like it. If you prefer a more prim, muted color palette, you're not going to like what I did. I love it. So just bear that in mind. Here it is. This is my Easter wordplay. And the yellow's not showing up really well on the video. You can see the yellow just fine in real life, but that word says daffodils and that one up there says tulips. And that is my April word play. I love it. I think it's so cute. The little bunny and his wagon's adorable. The colors are so springy and I'm already envisioning like the backing fabrics I'm gonna use to mount this. And it's just, I'm thinking I'll probably use like a blue and then outside of the blue, either a yellow or maybe the green. I don't know. I just, I really like how this turned out. I showed the threads that I was gonna use in my last video in case you're interested. They're all Victorian motto threads, but that is my April word play. And I love it. I love how cheery and springy it turned out. So that was finish number five. Then I have two more. Okay, then we have neither of these. Um, these are both new plans. I went ahead and decided to keep going with my monthly series and a couple of things. So I started my January um, Blocks with Charm by Lizzie Kate. I have February and March done. Um, and you'll see I have April planned for Stitch Mania. So I'm trying to get caught up to where we are in the year. But um, I went ahead and started January and I finished it. So I will show you the threads that I used in a minute. But here is January and it looks pretty much exactly like um, the model. I didn't use the recommended threads, I pulled all of my own, but I was able to match it pretty much identically. Um, so that is my January word, or uh, January Blocks with Charm. There's a little heart charm under the sheep's um, head. And it's really cute, they are so small, guys. I have small hands. Okay, I have very small hands. My wedding ring is a, is a size four and a half. <laughs> okay, I have really small hands. I always have. Um, and I can cover this whole thing with 
the palm of my hand. And this is on 25 count. Okay, these are bitty. They're so cute. If you haven't stitched these and you have them in your stash, pull them out and stitch them. I'm really loving them. Um, they are full coverage. You can see pretty much full coverage, but they go quickly because they're so small and they're just adorable. So this is my Lizzie Kate um, Blocks with Charm January. Here are the threads that I chose. So we have Blue Star my light blue then I used a classic color works I used blacksmith blue for my dark blue for like the night sky antique bisque is the kind of off-white um, taupe color in the sheep I also used um, DMC Blanc which I've already stolen for something else so it's not on here anymore um, then we've got uh, Weeks Dye Works Pecan you only need a tiny bit of that Weeks Dye Works Mascara, you just need a few little bits of black. And then my reds are Spectacular Claret and Primitive Red is the lighter red. Primitive Red. So those look really nice together. And then my green is Moss by Victorian Motto. And that was for like the trees, the evergreens. So those are my colors for January Blocks with Charm. Really turned out cute, I love it. Yeah, and then my last finish, finish number seven for this week was in continuing with the same idea, trying to get caught up on my monthly series. I started um, A Year in Chalk March by Hands On Design, and I don't know about you guys, but I always think this one is May because it says May at the top, and it's really just May luck be yours. It's like a cute, pithy saying a la Kathy Haberman, but for some reason, my brain sees May and it's like, oh, it's the month of May. No, this is March. <laughs> I'm probably the only one who has that problem, but it's just white and kind of that limey green um, for the shamrock. And so here it is. As with all the other ones, I'm stitching this on 32 count charcoal linen by Zweigart. And there it is. May luck be yours. Turned out very cute. I used um, just DMC Blanc for my white. And the white stitches are okay, they're passable. They're not, you know, the most perfect stitches ever, but it's white. No one's white stitches ever look perfect. <laughs> Unless you're stitching one over one, then your white stitches can look perfect. But the green that I chose is another Victorian motto. I chose Fresh Lime. Um, and it's just a nice limey green. And it just looks just like the, the cover. So that's my last finish, finish number seven. Um, really pleased with how much I, I was able to get done uh, in two weeks. Again, we're just flying right through. Then I did have one more start that is not finished yet. It would be further along if I hadn't tweaked my neck because this is what I was working on Thursday and was planning to continue working on yesterday and then I couldn't stitch at all. So um, I went ahead and started September for my monthly cottages. This is Country Cottage Needleworks Cottages of the Month, September Cottage. And it's just darling. I love the reds. I know we have a lot of people who love stitching red houses. This one's really pretty. And I'll show you the colors I've chosen, but this is as far as I've gotten. Just working on the house. I love that deeper red that I've chosen. You can see it's got some nice variegation in it. Um, yeah and some beautiful variegation in the roof as well that's it's just really pretty so this is my september cottage that's as far as i've gotten i will continue working on this the colors i have chosen because i always like to show them my reds are scarlet orange and fire embers i used fire embers on my april wordplay and it is just the most beautiful corally red so it just looks so good together with um, scarlet orange so those are the color the reds um, the fire embers is only used in the house all the rest of the red in the whole pattern is the darker red just in case you're wondering um, but those were my two reds for my um, brown for the roof and all the other things I'm using gentle arts ginger snap and I have another skein of this good thing because I don't think this will be enough to finish it but that's gentle arts ginger snap my yellow is another Victorian motto, sunflowers. Beautiful, vibrant yellow, kind of an autumn yellow. 
It's got a little bit of a golden tone to it, so it's perfect. My green is Pistachio Green by um, Victoria Motto. And it's another limey green, but let me show it to you compared with the limey green from the March. The March one has more blue. It's a little bit more of a, a cooler tone lime. And this is a very yellowy, almost golden lime. Um, you see that? So this one is much more fall-ish. I love playing with colors. I don't know if you've noticed. I absolutely love picking my own colors because I love just picking colors for things. And then I have just white. There's a little bit of white, so this is just DMC Blanc. And then for the black brown, um, I'm using C um, Classic Color Works Blackbird. So those are my colors for my September cottage. I love them. I think they're gonna look so beautiful together on this fabric, especially on this dirty linen. Um, and I'm gonna continue working on that probably until it's finished. I mean, that's just chart. That's just kind of how I roll right now. I just start something and work on it till it's done. However, that's not gonna happen in mania. That's what we're gonna talk about next. So those are all my finishes and my one whip that I've worked on. Um, and now let's talk about mania. Mania starts in about two weeks, a little less than two weeks, um, but I don't have another video. I'm Right now I'm kind of doing videos every other Saturday. Um, that just works well right now and I won't be, I won't have another video before Mania starts. So I wanted to show you what my plans are and we'll see what happens. I, how can I say this? I love having new starts, obviously. But I love having new starts if I can finish them. I don't love having a lot, a lot, a lot of whips. Right now I only have six big whips. The seventh is my September house, which is gonna be done soon. I only have six projects that are like continuing projects, not just small pieces that I start and then finish. But that being said, I have never really gone, you know, <laughs> full blast, full stitch mania. I've never done that before. And I thought it would be interesting to try this year. Now, I am not gonna start 31 things. Right now, I'm thinking I'm gonna start 15. Um, that would be one new start every other day. Uh, and if I get to a point in the month where I start to feel overwhelmed, then I reserve the right to put the brakes on and be like, nope, that's enough new starts, we're gonna stop there. But I did go ahead and pull 15 things um, to start. Now, also for Stitch Mania, I'm going to put my notes down because I don't need them anymore. Um, also for Stitch Mania, I did want to pull out some of my bigger whips again because I have those six. And I want to work on some of them for Stitch Mania. So my plan is that each week, there's four, four-ish weeks in May. And for each week, I'm going to have one big whip. Um, out on my table stand in my dining room um, because I like to keep my bigger projects out for a, a, a longer stretch of time basically so that whenever I have a minute I can sit down and put some stitches into it. So I pulled four of my six bigger whips to work on and I will give each one a week on my table and then I will also have the three to four depending um, new starts each week. So that's kind of the general idea. The four big whips that I've decided to pull out and work on. Um, one week I will pull out my son's stocking, Jamie's stocking. Ugh, floss too bitchy nose. Um, so here is Jamie's stocking. This is Christmas Eve fun stocking. It's a Dimensions Gold Collection kit. Um, just like all the rest of them in our family. I have four done. He's the only one who doesn't have his done. It's in a decent place. Um, the house is finished and mostly totally backstitched. And then I've gone up and started working on the sky. I don't have much left to do in the sky. You can kind of see where his name's going to go right in there. It's going to say James. So um, I am going to work on this for one of my weeks in Stitch Mania. And my goal, I think, in that week will be to try and finish the top half of the stocking. Um, if I can, then I might start going down, maybe filling in these trees. These They look empty right now. They will be filled in with brown um, and then start working down the stocking. So that will be one of my Stitch Mania larger projects that will stay out for a week. 
Um, let's just start a pile on the floor. <laughs> the next one that I'm excited to pull back out again, and I got really inspired to do this one again because I think in the Stitching with the Housewives Facebook group, I think that's where it was. I'm not in very many Facebook groups anymore. I kind of cleaned my Facebook out about a year and a half ago. Felt great. <laughs> Nothing wrong with being in lots of Facebook groups, but I'm not in a ton anymore. Um, but I am in the Stitching with the Housewives Facebook group, and someone just posted recently that she finished her um, Autumn at Hawk Run Hollow by Carriage House Samplings. And mine is definitely not done. <laughs> I am not very far in this, although it feels like I'm far because each of these blocks are huge and they're on 40 count and they take forever. Um, but I'm going to pull out my Hawk Run Hollow piece. I am stitching this on, this is, it's the recommended fabric. Hold on. It's been so long. <laughs> Bear with me for one moment, please. Uh, sand dune 40 count sand dune from lakeside linen that's what it is so it's a lakeside linen it's a beautiful gold um, color it's not a vintage so it doesn't have the modeling this is just 40 count sand dune by lakeside and it's an absolutely enormous piece and this is where I am <laughs> not very far I have the top piece and the first block done and then almost finished with the second block um the outline and i just need to fill it in so my goal obviously for the week that i have this out um is to finish the outline of the second block and start filling it in i am stitching this with um the npi silks that are called for this was my first big like silk splurge project and ooh, it made me fall in love with npi silk i just love it so this is my Ottoman Hawkrun Hollow. It's gonna be huge, you can see when it's done, but that will be my second um, large piece that I will have out for one week during Stitch Mania. Let me fold this back up. Plop that back in. So yes, stitching that with the NPI silks that are called for, there's like 30 of them. It's not an inexpensive project. It was a huge splurge when I bought it, but luckily I still love it. Um, I still love it just as much as I did the day I bought it. So that will be my second week big project. Third week. This one's so close to being done. And I've been putting this one off, but I'll tell you why. This is uh, Liberty's Welcome. Plum Street Samplers, Liberty's Welcome. Love this piece so, so much. It's again, beautiful. Again, stitching on 40 count lakeside linen. This time I'm using vintage pecan butter or pecan butter, depending on where you're from in the US. Those of you overseas, if we have any UK friends on here, how do you guys pronounce that word? Do you say pecan or do you say pecan? Because my grandmother is Southern and she says pecan, but my parents always said pecan, so I tend to say pecan. But anyway, 40 count vintage pecan butter by Lakeside Linen. Again, I am stitching this in the called for uh, NPI silks, which are on this side. They also have a DMC conversion, so you can stitch in DMC. I went ahead and splurged on the silks because I loved them so much in my Hawker and Hollow piece. Why not? And this one is so close to being done. And it's gorgeous. There it is in all of its glory. I did change the color of the house. The house is charted to be kind of a light grayish blue. Um, where can you see it? Well, you guys probably can't tell. And do you see that kind of gray blue in the center of these stars? In the four sides, that light grayish blue there? That was the color that was called for for the house, but it kind of got lost on my fabric. Because I used a slightly darker taupe than was recommended, it kind of blended right in. Was it the gray blue or was it the tan? I think it was the gray blue. Anyway, regardless, I changed the house to white and I love it. It makes me feel like we're looking at like Monticello or the White House or some kind of important American landmark house. I don't know. So consider it. If you're stitching this and the threads are getting lost on your fabric, consider changing the house to white. It's absolutely gorgeous. Anyway, 
that's Liberty's Welcome. I don't have very much left. This is, I think, the end of the bottom border, and I just have to do these, the side border on this side, and that's how far I have to go, and then I just need to fill in the inner stuff. Um, the reason I haven't pulled this back out is because I ordered a new set of roller frame um, dowels that are long enough for me to have this oriented horizontally so it would roll this way, okay? Right now, the largest um, roll of frame dowels I have fit this way, but are not long enough to have it horizontally, which is how I wanna work on it. And this is not a complaint, I wanna be really clear. I ordered those back in February, okay? And I knew that it can take some time to get your roll of frame dolls. They, they even say on their website that because of high demand, because they're all handmade, it can take, you know, four weeks sometimes. I think the problem that I ran into is that by the time we were at kind of getting to the four week mark is when the whole world shut down. So I need to send an email and just check in with Bush Mountain Stitchery and see how things are going. I haven't heard anything from them since I ordered it and I've been trying to like just give them time and space because I know everybody's lives are crazy. Um, but I would kind of, you know, they weren't inexpensive. They were long dowels. And so they were, you know, well, this is a, not crazy pricey, but they cost some money. And I just want to make sure that they haven't forgotten my order. <laughs> anyway, I did want to wait to work on this until I got those dowels. But we are running out of time. And I would really like to enter this in the state fair this summer in August. And it's already April. So <laughs> I don't think I can wait for dowels any longer. I think I just need to put it on my large Q-snap and make do. So that's what I'm gonna do and work on Liberty's Welcome. My last large project for the fourth week in May, and some of you are gonna be so excited because we haven't seen this in a long time. I'm gonna bring out my Heirloom Nativity Sampler by the Victoria Sampler. I love this so much. I still love this. This is one of my oldest pieces. I bought this probably back in 2008 eight, 2009, um, at the cross stitch cupboard in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I don't even know if they're open anymore. Does the cross stitch cupboard still exist? Anyone know? Um, bought this from them along with the accessory packs and the fabric. And I just love it. I'm stitching this. I believe it's 32 count. Yes, this is another one of this picture. This is another picture this plus. This is 32 count Lugana, I believe, and it's a picture this plus um, hand dyed, and it's another one where it's very tight, very, very bulky, but that's okay. Um, and this is where I am. So I'm about a third of the way done. You can see there, I have the shepherds and kind of under the shepherds, so I'm about to here working my way down. So I'm at least a third of the way done. Um, if you don't count the heart anger on the bottom, I'm about halfway, <laughs> but I'm, I'm not worried about the heart anger. I've done heart anger before and I like it. So this is my um, heirloom nativity sampler. Everything is done except the beads and the like, there's like a little jewel that hangs up here. Um, I'm gonna wait to do the beading till the end, but look at this like lace with the, Specialty stitches. This is a Gloriana silk that changes these colors. It's gorgeous. So pretty. Um, and like I said, I have both accessory packs, the regular silk accessory pack and the white silk accessory pack for this. So I'm stitching it with all the called for threads. It's beautiful. And I just, it's been too long since I worked on it. So that'll be my fourth week of Stitch Mania. So those are my four big projects. Now let's talk about small stuff. This is gonna be a long video. Buckle up, everyone. I think I have 14 in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yes, I have 14 in here. I'm technically planning on starting 15 things, but I'm giving myself an extra like an empty space in case there's something that comes out that I absolutely have to stitch or who knows I might not even get through all 14 of these so we're just gonna go for it and see what happens so let's just start oh this one's not that exciting I want to start my next um hands-on design scary apothecary which will be coffin paint I believe um yeah so I mean 
that or maybe it's not coffin paint I don't know what the next one's gonna I'm gonna start one of my scary apothecaries I don't know which one but that'll be a start in stitch mania I will probably choose to stitch this one on my light lime fabric since I haven't stitched one on light lime yet um, I've stitched one on orange my pale orange I've stitched one on the purple and I'll probably stitch the next one on light lime so I'll find one that looks good on the lime fabric again stitching these with all Victorian motto sampler threads and they're fabulous they're so pretty they're so vibrant and oh I just love them Kathy's a genius with color and you guys know how I love my bright awesome colors so Kathy's right up my alley so that'll be a start in stitch mania and I don't know what order these are gonna get started in I'm just gonna grab something that calls to me and start it so that'll be start number one or start number 13 I don't know another new start continuing with some of my monthly series will be my September installment of the snowflower diaries this is a freebie okay I'm not breaking any copyright laws here um, and it's got these cute owls I'm gonna stitch it on blue this is millennium blue Zweigart linen 28 count millennium blue and let me put that back in there so I don't lose it. You're going to have to be patient because there's going to be so much stuff if I don't put it all away. And then I kind of, I don't have them on a ring, but I kind of went through and picked all my threads. There's some Victorian motto. There's some, see, there's gentle arts. There's some things. Anyway, so those are my threads for it. And yeah, that'll be one of my starts in May for Mania. Number three. Again, with my monthly series, I, like I said I was going to, I will start my April Blocks with Charm. Lizzie Kate Blocks with Charm. So cute. Just like the others, I'm stitching this on 25 count Mushroom Lugana. Two over two. And these are the threads. And they're so Easter -y. Look at how pretty. Oh, they make me happy. There's purple. So I'm using just really quick pink flamingo. Uh, pink pearl is the light pink. Pumpkin harvest by Classic Colorworks is my orange. Sunflower yellow. This is a beautiful kind of buttery pale yellow. Lime essence is my light green. And lucky shamrock is my darker green. And Mint Tapestry as my teal aqua color. And then Peoria Purple by Weeks Dye Works for my purple. And it's so Easter-y. I just love it. I know Easter's over, but it's still April. And this is technically April Block of Charm, not Easter. So that'll be a start in May. Next. I'm gonna start, this is a new, so I'm not doing a separate haul segment in this video because all of my haul that I got in the last two weeks is all included in my Stitch Mania plans. I went ahead and got, you saw in my last video, I got uh, Hands On Designs Carrots and Cottontails Farm. Um, I went ahead and got <laughs> Star Spangled Swine Farm because it's so cute. I want all four of these. I'm gonna be getting the Jack Lantern Junction and the, what's the Christmassy one? I can't remember but anyway this is Star Spangled Swine Farm I'm gonna stitch this on 32 count charcoal linen and I am going to stitch this in all the DMC that's called for so there's all of my DMC blues and reds and golds and greens and it's just gonna be beautiful so that will be a new start and that's a little bit whoop, ugh, losing threads that's a little bit of a larger start be kind of fun to start something bigger I've been starting so many smalls it's kind of fun so that's Star Spangled Swine Farm by Hands on Design and I just zipped there we go <laughs> zipper got stuck okay next this is also new haul when I bought Star Spangled Swine Farm this is one of um, Kathy's market releases it was like a small market release and that's Humble Honey and I just love this it's so cute, little pin cushion, and I totally wanna to get these pin minis to make a little, and I want the same fabric. I just wanna make it exactly how she made it. It's so cute. Um, I will be stitching this again, 32 count charcoal linen by Zweigart. It's my go-to kind of gray black ch chalkboard. All of the chalkboard, everything's chalkboard right now. This is my favorite chalkboard fabric. 
And the colors I chose, there are only four. She charted it in DMC, so you can use DMC. But I am going to use um, Overdyes. One color will be DMC Blanc for the white. And then I have Multi-Shaded Blue for my blue. Um, Corn Husk by The Gentle Art for my green. And Dried Grapevines by um, Victoria Motto as my B skip color. So those are the three colors I will use along with white and it's gonna be beautiful. So that'll be a little small, small start. Uh, Humble Honey by Hands On Design. Putting everything away. Sorry, that annoys you. Just pretend this is an ASMR video. <laughs> okay, next. This is also new haul. Remember last video when I got all of those fun colors of Zweigart linen and I told you I had plans for four of them? These are the plans. <laughs> I've only gotten two of them so far, but I will be getting the other two. I am going to start the Country Cottage Needleworks Seasonal Celebrations, and this is summer. So I'm going to start summer, and I will be stitching it on lemon yellow. Oh, it's going to be so summery. Lemon yellow. And the colors I have chosen for this, they are honoring. We have Buckeye Scarlet by Gentle Arts for my red. Bittersweet by Gentle Arts for my orange. Then we've got Flame Azalea for my yellow. I needed kind of a buttery yellow. So that looks so good on that yellow fabric. If, you, if you're gonna put um, tone on tone, a, a color on top of the same color, like on your linen, you have to make sure it's the same color. <laughs> I'm not making very much sense. You have to make, it, make sure it's the same tone. So you can't use a real lemony yellow on this ironically named lemon yellow fabric because it's actually much more of a buttery yellow. It's got a lot more creamy orange base Sorry, you guys aren't here for a color theory discussion. Let's just keep going. Flame Azalea is my yellow. Green Fields is my green. Oops, I dropped my bag. It's Berry Blue is my blue. Golden Earth is my brown. And then Coal, Weeks Dye Works Coal is my black. And look at those colors. Just like, have you ever seen anything more summery and cheery and just, oh, I love it so much. These colors are gonna look so good on this. Look at how cute. Okay, so I'll stop. <laughs> I told you colors make me happy. Um, sorry, I had to pick that up. So this is gonna be the first one of these seasonal celebrations that I'm gonna stitch. However, just so you can see, I did also purchase spring. I haven't purchased autumn and winter yet. Spring is gonna be on the pink, cause hello pinks can you see that they stitched theirs on i can't tell if it's white or blue it looks almost blue in the picture but i think it might be white oh no it is blue they stitched theirs on a pale blue i'm gonna stitch mine on pink for spring and then the limestone is gonna be for autumn and the blue is gonna be for winter. So eventually I will purchase those charts. Right now I only have spring and summer. But for Stitch Mania, I'm gonna start summer. And that is another new start. Moving right along. And I haven't decided yet if I'm gonna stitch the whole chart or just the house. I know um, Priscilla Blaine, when she stitched hers, she left off the words at the bottom, but I kinda like the words, so I don't know. I also like how hers looks without the words. The jury is still out on whether or not the words will be stitched. But I have enough fabric that I could stitch the words with that 9 by 13 cut. It's the perfect size to do it long ways, but I don't know. We'll see. Then, because I was feeling sad about my April House Trio by Waxing Moon Designs, I ordered two more of them. <laughs> I bought the Patriotic House Trio and I bought the Summer House Trio. And I've decided to restart a new house trio and I'm going to do patriotic house. I'm going to restart a house trio. I'm going to stitch this on 32 count vintage smoky white Belfast linen. Can you see the subtle modeling there? It's very pretty. It's, it's a nice, if you want to stitch on white, 
This is just has a little bit more interest than just plain white. It's just really nice. Can you see it? It's real hard to see, but it's there. It's really lovely. I'm going to stitch that on Vintage Smoky White, Patriotic House Trio, and the colors I have chosen are beautiful. They're a little bit more vintage Americana. I, instead of going for really like bright red, white, and blue, which is kind of my MO, um, I decided to kind of stick more to the, the color palette in the model photo. And I did pick my own, but you can see I went with kind of more dusty um, like colors. The reds are a little bit more vintagey. So here we have Victorian motto burgundy and Victorian um, Victorian motto Victorian shawl is the color of this kind of soft reddy pink. It's very it's a little more primitive looking you can see. We have golden harvest as kind of a gold and then sunshine glory as my yellow. Blarney green is my green my light green, and then Classic Colorworks Spinach as my darker green. My blues are Early Bluebells and Formal Garden, which is a gorgeous deep royal navy. And then for gray, Gentle Arts Soot. For my white, I'm gonna use Gentle Arts Porcelain, which has almost a pale pinky undertone. Um, but the reason I chose it is because I, I need the white to show up on this white fabric. And this one pops really nicely because it's a slightly pinky tone. You can still see it against the white background. So that's why I chose that. And then for my dark brown, Classic Colorworks Caterpillar. So those are the colors for my um, Patriotic House Trio. And I really like them. They're still vibrant enough and cheery enough that it kind of fits in my style. But it's a little bit vintage looking. A little... Um, Retro? Retro's not the word. Vintage. We'll go with vintage. So I will be starting Patriotic House Trio. I'm not going to start Summer House Trio yet, but I have it, and I'm keeping it in the same bag for... I don't know why. Just because. Those were both new haul. Um, next, I showed these a video or two ago. I have these three um, hands-on design around the holidays. I have put on the hat... I have Live Within Your Harvest, and I have Where Liberty Dwells. Now, I am going to start one of these for Stitch Mania. I'm not going to start all three, I don't think. Maybe I will. I don't know if I'm going to start all three. I already have fabrics picked out that I showed you in a previous video. I also went ahead and pulled all the threads. So, for each one. So, for example, this is for live within your harvest. And the ironic thing about this one is I think I had almost every color that was called for. It's all gentle arts. And I had all of them in my stash by some miracle. I don't have as many gentle arts as I have Victorian models, but for some reason I just had all of these. So this is for live within your harvest, which apparently I'm stitching in the called for colors because I had them. So why the heck not? Um, and then for, um, what was the Americana one? Where Liberty Dwells. I pulled mostly Victorian mottos. This one's also kind of a vintagey um, 4th of July idea style. So that's what I have pulled for Where Liberty Dwells. If you want to know any of the details of what colors these are, just let me know down in the comment section. But I know not everyone cares, and so I don't want to waste a ton of time going through all of the colors I chose ever. And then for put on the hat, these aren't on a ring, so they're kind of hard to show. But we've got some DMCs. We've got some other over dyes. I love this. We're going to use um, Weeks Dye Works Purple Majesty as the purple. Clockwork. Ohio Lemon Pie. I just have a lot of different random small <laughs> bobbins of thread for put on the hat. So I don't know which one I'm going to do. Maybe we're going to do, you know what, let's do something fun. Let's do a giveaway. <laughs> I feel like giving something away. I have so many fun patterns to give away, or I could give away a gift card somewhere. I don't know. I think I'm going to give, give, do a giveaway, and to enter the giveaway, I want you to tell me which of these three you think I should start. Put on the hat, live within your harvest, or where liberty dwells. I'm going to set that to the side, because I think we're going to revisit that at the end. Okay, next. These are also new. This is also haul. I bought the first, well not the first two, but the first to me 
of the um, Whirly Gigs by Heart and Hand. I saw these on Priscilla and Chelsea's channel and I loved them. So I bought Spring and Summer. I don't have Fall and Winter yet. So, so cute. I'm going to start Summer because my brain is already in summertime mode. I'm going to stitch this on 32 count um, Vintage Sahara Linen by um, Zweigart. It's a kind of mottled ye pale yellow. If you like Vintage Country Mocha, this is along the same lines, but it's more golden. It's really pretty. And I think with these like summery colors, I think it's just going to be gorgeous. So colors I picked for that. I don't think I'll go through all of them. They're mostly on bobbins, so it's harder to see them. But greens, grays, reds. For my reds, I'm using used brick and bandana, both by Classic Color Works. Anyway, so those are the threads I've pulled for Summer Whirly Gig by Heart and Hand. And I'm keeping the spring in the same bag. Again, I don't know why. I'm not going to start it yet. Next, I don't even know what number we're on anymore, guys. This is another bigger one. I just enjoyed starting Tingles so much. I'm going to start my Lizzie Kate Jingles series. There are 12 charts, um, 12 patterns. Uh, the, the Tingle series, there's only um, six charts because there's two patterns in each chart. But the, the Jingles, excuse me, are all separate. And there are 12 of them. I will be stitching them all in one big piece again, as I am doing with tingles. And the fabric I have chosen, I also went ahead and printed out the free border from Lizzie Kate's website to put them all together. I will be stitching these on a lakeside linen. This is 32 count vintage winter sky lakeside linen. And it's a beautiful like purpley gray. It's perfect for a winter piece. So I am going to stitch jingles on this and the let me put it back in the bag ASMR guys ASMR if you don't know what I'm talking about look it up it's so weird but it's so great I love it it's ASMR is a strange strange niche of YouTube but it's fascinating and it's very relaxing so I don't know pretend it's ASMR um the colors I've chosen these are so fun Can you see that aqua? Oh, it's so pretty. Okay, so these are my colors. I have pinks, two reds. I have one pink, two reds, white. White's boring, you know white. Um, an orange, three different greens. One, two, and three. Um, this beautiful aqua, it's called Favorite Aqua and a couple of browns. This is a gold and a kind of a medium and then a darker brown and black. So those are my colors for jingles and stitching on this winter sky. I think it's going to be just really pretty. It looks so good together. It really brings out these colors really bring out the purple of the fabric rather than the gray. Um, the colors that you choose to stitch with can affect the, the way that you see the fabric you stitch on. You can either pull out like the purple in this fabric or you could pull out the gray depending on what fabric or threads you chose. No more color theory now. So that's Jingles. That'll be a big one. Then I'm gonna start another of my Prairie Schooler months. I'm gonna start September. And the reason I'm going to start September is because it's my least favorite. <laughs> Does anybody else do that? I have 12 of these to stitch. I've stitched three. And I chose to do September because I like it probably the least of the rest that I have to stitch. And so I want to get it out of the way. Which will motivate me to keep working. If I put off the one I like least till the end, it will never get done. The series will never be finished. I just know myself. So I'm going to stitch it now. It's not ugly. It's just the colors are a little dull because it's September. I'm just going to stitch it on some white, 32 count white Zweigart linen. And I'm using all of the DMCs. The funny thing is when you look at the DMCs, look at how pretty those colors are. That is not going to be boring or ugly at all. 
the, the, the cover picture makes it look like it might be a little boring and ugly and it's not. Look at that pretty blue and these reds. It's going to be lovely. So I'm going to start September by the Prairie Schooler, which will be my fourth one of the series of 12. We're getting down to the end. I think I only have three left. Then, oh, this is exciting. I'm going to start my very last Halloween small piece by, I don't even know what to call these. They're like the Halloween minis is kind of what I'm calling them. They're prairie schoolers, but they're smaller. And I have stitched three of them. This is the last one that I'm planning to stitch because I'm going to finish them all together somehow. Um, so this is double double. <laughs> it's so cute. And just like all the rest, I'm stitching it on 25 count cream or ivory Lugana. And I am stitching, I have a big needle. This is like a 24, I think, um, because I am stitching these three over two with the DMC. There's only two colors, 3371 and um, 921 is the orange. So, and each, each one of these patterns, this is about to fall off, whatever. I know what color that is. Each of these patterns requires about a skein and a half to two skeins of 3371 because I, I'm stitching them three over two on such a large count. So it gobbles up floss. It is a floss monster, but I just love how they look with the three over two. It's nice and full coverage, even on 25 count. And it's my last one. So I'm gonna start that, that's exciting. Um, okay. I've decided it's time to start another Mill Hill Santa because I have so many and I need to start more. So I'm gonna stitch Rocky Mountain. I have stitched this one before. I feel like there's a hair, pardon me. Do you guys get hairs in your cleavage? <laughs> I shouldn't have done that on the video. My apologies. Real life, ladies, okay, real life. I have a lot of hair, okay, it goes places sometimes. I'm going to start uh, Rocky Mountain Santa. I stitched this one before and gave it away as a gift. So I'm going to restitch it for myself on the perforated paper with the floss. I put it in a bag. I'm not sure why I put it in a bag. Just so I could remember that it's a start probably. And then last but not least, last one guys. Oh, and this is a boring one. I think I'll probably start another one of my tingles, which will be October 31st, which is the next one to go on this it goes underneath those two October 31st so that's not really all that exciting because I just showed this um, project to you a minute ago but I'll show you the threads again because they're just lovely and I need to pull this pair of scissors out because I'm not currently working on this project these are all Victorian motto and they're glorious that purple kills me special orchid Oh, it's so pretty. That aqua and the oranges. I know I've shown this to you before, but let's just look again because these colors, the greens, oh. Color makes me so happy. Just look at that. I want a headband made out of this. Ooh, look at how good that looks. I'm such a dork. I'm sorry. You guys are so nice to hang with me for almost an hour. I'm done now. That'll be a start in May as well. My next team. Is. So that's 14. 14 starts. Leaving me one extra start if I feel like it or I can just be done. Um, but let's go back to this. I am going to go through my stash and I'm going to pull a couple of goodies for someone. I think I'll pull a piece of fabric, uh, maybe a thread, a, a skein of thread or two, um, and maybe some fun patterns. And so I want you, if you would like to be entered for the giveaway, here's what I'd like you to do. First, I would like you to tell me which of these Around the Holidays by Hands on Design you think I should start. Should I start Where Liberty Dwells, Live Within Your Harvest, or Put on the Hat? Vote below which one you think I should start for Stitch Mania. Then, after you tell me which one you think I should start for Stitch Mania, I would like you to tell me what are your favorite fabrics to stitch on? Are you an Ada stitcher? Are you a linen stitcher? Are you an even weave stitcher? Do you have a preferred count? Um, and let me know what your favorite count 
and type of fabric to stitch on is because I may have something to give you. Um, then I'd like to know what your favorite threads are. Are you an over dyed girl? Are you a DMC? Are you silks, princess floss? What is your, what are your favorite threads to stitch with? And then what kind of patterns do you like? Are you a sampler person? Do you love samplers? Are you a prim kind of, you know, Brenda Gervais and what are some other ones that are that do kind of a more primitive style? Um, Plum Street and Heartstring Samplery. Are you more of a primitive style or are you like me and you like really bright, vibrant things like hands-on designs and country cottage needleworks and, you know, Lizzie Cates. Um, so please tell me what your favorite things are to stitch because I am going to do a giveaway because I haven't done one in a long time. So first tell me which of these three you think I should start and then tell me what all your favorites are. Fabrics, flosses, patterns, designers, whatever you can. And I will curate for the winner a special gift just for you based on your preferences. That's fun, right? Okay, I'm excited now. Anyway, guys, we're, we're getting to an hour now. So I'm going to sign off but thanks so much for hanging out with me thanks for looking at my stitch mania stuff with me be sure to uh, comment below to enter the giveaway please don't say giveaway um just answer the questions and tell me your favorites and uh yeah that's all i've got i will hopefully see you in two weeks at which time it will be may and i will have started my stitch mania i hope you're all doing well i hope you are healthy and safe and happy um I know right now can be hard mentally, like mental health speaking, mental and emotional health. So please reach out to me if you need someone to talk to. Um, I did want to say, I got a comment. Sorry, I know we need to close. Um, Millie, Millie commented on my last video. Millie is in Puerto Rico and she lives alone and the um, restrictions there are much stricter than they are here in the United States. And so she said how much she appreciates people making floss tube videos right now because it, you know, she doesn't feel so alone. So hi Millie in Puerto Rico. Thank you for your comment. I hope you're healthy and safe and have everything you need. But yes, we are all here for you. We love you. We, we don't want anyone to feel alone right now. So that's all I wanted to say about that. Anyway, take care guys. This video is super long, so I'm going to go, but I will see you real soon. Bye.